Uh, my name is Dan Lear. I'm the executive director for the South Chicago Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I want to thank everyone that made it out this morning. Uh, I know the weather uh, wasn't comfortable, but we still made it out for uh, today's event. I know we had at least about maybe 25, 30 people that had uh, reserved for today, but again, uh, the weather probably <laughs> kept some people home today. Um, I'm going to hand this over to Jack. I know I want to thank Jack for getting this all together with the uh, uh, with the chamber as well as Metropolitan uh, to, uh, for it's supposed to be today. It was supposed to be a walking tour, so I know Jack is going to uh, get everybody ready and ready to walk, right? So again, thank you everyone for coming. This is a great. Uh, um, uh, as most of you know, we uh, the South Chicago Chamber partnered with the South Chicago Chamber of Commerce and SSA Number no. Five partnered with UIC uh, a couple of years ago in putting a revitalization plan for Commercial Avenue, and they've done a great job in putting that together. We had community meetings, community development committees, visioning meetings. Uh, we have now a committee that meets every Tuesday of 25 to 30 people. We also have created five subcommittees that are working on different projects in regards to revitalization. Um, this right here, uh, this project, I think, is a great opportunity when we think of the bigger picture of what we want South Chicago to become, uh, and it fits right in that we know that commercial is a key to all of that, but as we're building commercial, we want to think about everything else that fits into to all of the bigger plan. And with that, I want to bring up Jack. Thank you. <laughs> well, everyone, uh, we're uh, Oh, we've been working on this uh, event for, I don't know, a few, like a month and a half now. So I think it's a decent turnout. Uh, we can walk if we want. It's up to everyone. Uh, I don't, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> um, first, we wanted uh, to uh, hear from a few people uh, about the site. Um, we're going to hear from uh, Tom Shepard from the Southeast Environmental Task Force, as well as Sarah from Metropolitan Planning Council. Um, Joanne, help. Um, she she's the one who did all the facilitating for the event. So maybe she'd like to say a few words. Joanne, I was not responsible for the hot chocolate. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know, Tom. Tom, would you like to come up, <laughs> say a few words about the site, how where it keep, like how, where it originated, the idea of this site being turned into for uh, public use, um, all that, and the ideas of where it goes. Oh. Kind of okay, are you, are you uh, focusing on just the one site, or? Oh, you can talk about all the sites. Talk, talk about how, how it all began and uh, how, how we're here today. Oh, it all began. We got all day today. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of hot chocolate back there. <laughs> all right, thanks, Jack. Uh, yeah, I'm really pleased to be here with, with you and, and to see this uh, moving along, however slowly. Uh, my portion of it anyway, and I'm, I'm glad to see that Commercial Avenue is getting the attention that it needs and deserves. And uh, how all these things can fit together uh, are environmental groups and uh, people who, uh, conservationists and people who enjoy outdoor recreation, uh, the rivers, uh, uh, boating, and fishermen and all that stuff can work together to help redevelop this area. In fact, we've been talking with Alderman Garza. Um, about rebranding the 10th Ward. And uh, once at one time, uh, this was like the playground for the city, at least uh, portions of it, where at Lake Calumet, where there was a lot of fishing and trapping and uh, along the rivers, uh, have always been a um, place for people to recreate and to uh, fishing was a big thing out here in the south, southeast side. Uh, how it began, I guess. Uh, uh, when I became involved in the, with the task force in 1999 was just about the time when the city and a number of other uh, institutions and agencies were putting together what's called the Calumet Open Space Reserve Plan and the uh, Calumet Land Use Plan that went to the City Council in the state of Illinois and was approved by both, which uh, included a number of green spaces. I brought along some maps. and. I will, my car wouldn't start this morning, so I didn't get to my office to pick up what I really wanted to bring, but I, I had enough stuff in my back seat where, <laughs> where most of my stuff ends up, so I brought along a few things. Um, so the land use plan calls for a lot of green space in the area and redeveloping brownfields. Brownfields, of course, are where factories had once been, uh, polluted sites now. 
a lot of steel mill sites, obviously, and, and uh, I don't have to tell you anything about that and former pollution in this area. So a big effort was begun um, back around 1998 to uh, get a Calumet Heritage Feasibility Study uh, in order to promote a Calumet Heritage Corridor that would begin around South Chicago, go around the bottom of the lake, and into Indiana. Um, so that called for economic development, they called for um, green open spaces, cultural attributes, all the things that, that you work on on a local level here in South Chicago as well. Um, highlighting those places, featuring them, improving, and so forth. Uh, we came into it um, at the, uh, along the river because the river has been called um, an industrial corridor and it's zoned as such so that meant that it didn't allow for any other types of industries along there. Uh, Grant, you and I should probably have a conversation about your licensing when you first came in if you had to go through zoning issues and that, but finally the city is opening up to thinking that maybe it shouldn't um, shouldn't ignore and preclude having any kind of uh, recreational facilities or, or uh, river um, open spaces for the public along the river at certain spots. Uh, before, it had been completely off limits to any kind of uh, uh, development like that. So we came into it, uh, the, the conversations began over at the Southeast Historical Museum. At that time, uh, Rod Sellers, who was, I think he was president at the time, or at least director at the time, and he was conducting tours at um, mostly at the uh, 92nd Street spot. We developed an industrial history tour that included the river and, and places that um, had been along the river. Uh, and uh, right there at 92nd Street, the city was planning to, they had the uh, 10th Ward and 7th Ward streets and sanitation offices. You, some of you remember that. Okay, the building is gone now. They moved across the street. They reconfigured that whole area when they were uh, uh, expanding Route 41 there. And um, we thought, well, that's an ideal place because uh, if, you, if you know those pods out there or those, uh, what are those big buttresses called? They protect the, the uh, bridge from getting hit. Well, dolphins. What are they? Dolphins. Dolphins. Oh, they're, they're, they're like 19 wood piles put together. Yeah. Because if you, if you take 19 pencils, they'll lock themselves oh, okay. together. Yeah. Just yeah. the way the, and then they drive them in and and uh, connect them up. So yeah. Well, guys used to sit out there and fish. People used to sit out there and fish, and uh, probably was a little bit dangerous. But uh, I know fishermen and hunters get into a lot of strange spots. Uh, so do hikers like myself and uh, explorers. <laughs> I call myself an explorer and probably a trespasser most of the time. <laughs> uh, so we looked at that and said, you know, there's people out here that really love to watch the boats coming and going. That's about the time when you were looking at your property here and getting ready to move out here. And we thought, uh, and, and the mills were gone and it didn't look like they were making any uh, uh, big comeback. Uh, so we thought, well, what's going to happen to these properties along here? They're just laying waste, and we had a lot of discussions with planning department, uh, planning and development department, and Alderman Pope had recently been elected in 1999, and he uh, he liked the idea, uh, but when we went downtown with it, we got shut down immediately by the uh, City of Chicago Planning and Development, who said, no, there it is, look, right on the map, it says industrial quarter, can't do that, no, no, no. Uh, we didn't give up that easy. We, we kept on coming back and um, at the time at the museum uh, He's passed away, but Joanne would remember Joe Mulek real well and Maybe some of the, you others that uh, were around back then. Uh, Joe drew innumerable pictures around South Chicago of old theaters and restaurants and churches, a big collection of churches. Maybe you can help me out. What else? And taverns. Taverns, oh. <laughs> How many were along 92nd Street at one time? Okay, you got the figure, don't you? Yeah, we, we could do a guessing game and then we'll... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Joe uh, went to each of the sites that we looked at, and we looked at the 92nd Street site, which some of you were, were out for our earlier uh, walk over there to uh, uh, assess that area. 
back around, when was that, sir? About July, August? Yeah, June, late June. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so he, he did uh, some nice drawings, and, and these, uh, it doesn't have to be exactly like this, but it, it opened our eyes to a vision of what, what we could do if we greened up these places. Because if you go and look at them today, they're really bleak. Uh, <coughs> Those uh, dolphins are pretty interesting to look at, but they're they're not um, uh, very appealing. And uh, so maybe just pass it around, just so others can see how how a uh, property like that can be transformed. So we we went along, and um, uh, it looked like the city wasn't going to hear us until, uh, but we didn't we didn't give up entirely. Um, around when was the last aldermanic election? 2015, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. So around 2013 or so, we got a call from Alderman Pope who said, "Hey, I've got these plans on my desk, and we're going to develop something. We're going to we're working on it, and we're talking to the park district uh, along the river here, and um, uh, but we just never got together on it. So they they remained on his desk, and he no longer has that desk. So we don't know where those plans ended up." We might be able to find out if we find the proper people, Sarah. But uh, uh, anyway, that gave us the impetus to uh, continue trying to achieve this. And about the same time, Lakeside Development was uh, supposed to be occurring, and they were working on that, and then this plan for Commercial Avenue. Well, if we're going to make all these improvements on one particular street or one particular area, how are we going to ignore something that's just a few blocks over or a half mile over that that could be an asset, a true asset to the community and something like little parks, uh, little rest areas, uh, places for people to uh, do this fishing or, or river watching. Do you, do you think there's any people that come around and just do plain river watching, Grant? Well, if you got a nice enough place, there would be, you know, yeah. the, there's, uh, I mean, there's definitely the fishermen are are back and scrounging for more wall right. space and you know any a lot of times people want to you know get a hot dog at uh, Skyway Dogs and and then <laughs> they go if there was a bench someplace to sit down for 20 minutes and and eat it slowly rather than three minutes on the mm -hmm. you know <laughs> bench or something right. like that though but I mean people like to yeah, kind of sit next to the to to waterways. Right at your spot along the river, yeah. Calumet Fisheries. I know you mentioned Skyway, another landmark. Calumet Fisheries. We have people from Waukegan and Racine, Wisconsin, and Schaumburg. So, where's this Calumet Fisheries? They get they get south of Madison Street. They want to hit Calumet Fisheries. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, at this point, I think they put out a, a, a picnic bench in the summer. It might, might have been out there when we were out yep. there last summer. Uh, <coughs> But that particular corner, that uh, spot on the river, really could be enhanced, could be a, a tourist destination spot. Of course, uh, you have the uh, uh, Blues Brothers Bridge right there. Um, people have been promoting that and, and publicizing that. There was, a, I think, there was a Blues Brothers uh, bike ride a few years ago, and something else that was was it a tour that was tour that was developed around that. Uh, South Chicago uh, Chamber of Commerce has um, this year done its own promotion yeah. of the Blues Brothers, oh, and more okay. about that later. Oh, there you go. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I never, I haven't seen this. Okay, cool. Um, it's 36 years, Tom. Yeah, 36 years of since the Blues Brothers movie. Ah, okay. Well, it's a long time. People <laughs> in the room that aren't that old. <laughs> uh, so. The thing is, we've been uh, along the way. We uh, we developed 19 different partners, local partners in the area, and we've worked with uh, Friends of Chicago River, um, and Open Lands, and uh, some other the Alliance for the Great Lakes, Friends of the Parks, and talking about this over the years. And just recently, uh, Sarah could tell you what about two years ago, the Great Rivers Plan was conceived and uh, which um, actually included the Calumet River. Uh, each time I run into the mayor up on the north side somewhere, I don't think he's aware of the Calumet River, but we're going to try to make him aware of the Calumet River, because most of the attention, and I don't have to tell people who live in the southeast area, most of the attention 
goes downtown or to the north side uh, up until now. So it's our turn. Uh, we have serious people now that are looking at it. We're happy to have the, uh, the help of the MPC and uh, that they have kind of taken this initiative to the next level. And, and uh, Jack, we're, we're glad that you saw the value in this. And the South Chicago Chamber was always, was one of our original partners at that time. Neil Bazanko is the director here. And uh, he was very enthused about this, this project to see it go through. And it will be a, a quality of life thing for the, for the whole neighborhood. Um, any kind of a park, any kind of a greenery, any uh, improvement like that is going to affect either the, the thinking and the, uh, the health and the well-being and, and the fun that people can have along the riverway. So uh, we're looking to see it developed. Um, these, these parks, we're looking to uh, talk more about acquisition and potential uh, more community meetings to get the community to talk about and let us know what they're interested in. I know you've had a series of meetings about similar things. Uh, same thing is going on in the southeast parks. The Chicago Park District has been having area-wide meetings and we're also working on a project at Lake Calumet uh, to get that open to the public and so there's a lot of good things happening. This river plan kind of uh, I think it would help with development at where Lakeside was uh, I think it would help Down River, I think it would help Grant Crowley, and I think it would, would uh, uh, give these restaurants uh, an added boost and be something really good for the whole community. So uh, that's, uh, that's my story, and if you have any questions at this point, I, I'd be happy to entertain them. Okay, I must have covered it real well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, just really quickly, Tom, we have a great deal to thank you for. Um, early, early in the history of this area, mm -hmm. there was this person ca uh, called James Harvey Bowen, who worked with this other person called George Pullman. Right. And it's really great to see uh, those two people represented in uh, this sort of common cause for developing the, the greater southeast side. Uh, you from Pullman, and your, your heart's been here along the county mat always, I know that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's really good to see those two parts working together and the future for the area. So thank you very much for that. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And Grant, did you want to say something? Because you're, you're in the middle of all this stuff. Well, I'm new to the area. I've only been here. Well, we need a, a... I mean, why out of all places did you come here? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, I'm filling a, a little bit. Uh, the, uh, I had 12 acres up on the uh, south branch just west of Halsted where we stored about 800 uh, boats and um, uh, there was two factors. One that the, we were getting so many boats that uh, were massed up sailboats that needed to come down the Chicago River and uh, that was a, a, uh, at the time when we first started, I started the company in 78, um, we didn't have any really conflicting traffic and then we had less boats. The tour boats have grown by a factor of 15. You know, back when we started in 78 there was probably about four and there's now like 60. And including water taxis. Well and, and they're and they're bigger and so when we we always grouped our boats into groups of about twenty so they wouldn't you know affect so bridge raisings. It got to where between the 60 tour boats and some of them being huge and our sailboats in constricted, sometimes a bridge would get stuck for 10 minutes and we, the boats, that was getting tougher to do. And our property was an old people's gas, uh, actually an equitable gas, um, coal uh, manufacturing, gas uh, uh, manufacturing coal from 18, 87 to 1934 and it had coal tar in the soil. So People's Gas came in, tested, it's one of the 29 sites they had and said, you know, we're going to have to spend 10 million dollars coming back here and, and cleaning up our old property. And um, we talked about how to facilitate that and it was decided that the best thing is they would pay me rent for the four years that they were going to be using the facility to remediate it 
and that subsidized me, you know, uh, moving down here to a larger facility that didn't have as many bridges to the lake and had more indoor buildings existing and stuff. So it's been a very good move. Uh, it would have been nice if the park district didn't raise their fees so much over the years that I would have been able to expand <laughs> the number of boats. Then I mean, that's the problem. I moved down into a larger uh, facility that costs more in real estate taxes and electricity for lighting and you know. So the overhead's gone up, and really the marketplace has has been hurt by. By, uh, has gone down in the number of boats that park in the Chicago Park uh, Harbor system mm -hmm. and, and, and stuff. So, but uh, we, 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 we think the pluses are much more than the negatives on our move. It's a, it's a good community. We, we've been safe here. It's, uh, it's, all, it's all worked out fine on, uh, uh, on, on us. So, um, I've also been on the board of Friends of the Chicago River since the about 1990, <coughs> and so they've always watched what what has happened with uh, with having uh, river guidelines and having people become aware of the river, and and it's been great, you know. So so it'd be nice to plant the seeds for something that that, that happened here. This Great Rivers project is a like a 30-year project because the reservoirs that the Metropolitan Water Reclamation sy System will finish off in the um, by uh, 2029 unless they get more funding but uh, will uh, practically eliminate the combined sewer outflows um, uh, and that will uh, make the water quality take another huge step up. I, I watched the step between 78 when I became intimate with the river up there and when the deep tunnel section, which only has like a billion gallon storage, when the reservoirs are all done, they're gonna have 20 billion gallons of storage. So we're no longer, we're very seldom gonna have the combined sewer outflows. And so the whole river system's gonna be much more recreationally prepared and, and mm -hmm. stuff. And so to get ahead of that, which is gonna happen in 2029, um, we have to be thinking about, this won't affect this section of the river, this section of the river is already the lake water, mm -hmm. you know, for eight miles into the O'Brien Lock. Mm -hmm. That's where the, uh, uh, the sewage is actually put into the Cal Sag, and, and, you know, after that, so. But I'm an engineer, so I always like, you know, what the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District or the designs, and it, it, well, it is that some of the, the spectacular designs of a hundred years ago are now realizing that they are environmentally sound, you know, so we have to go back and, and fix this, and that's what the tunnel and the reservoirs and stuff is trying to accomplish, you know. Mm -hmm. If anybody have any questions or if you ever want to tour a boat yard, <laughs> do that. But I mean, this park would be, um, you know, initially, uh, um, you know, fishing. I would think I'd, I'd need to swing by and see what the wall looks like and see if people can get close enough and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we have people show up with cameras to take pictures of the ore carriers, the old ore carriers. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got an ore carrier that was built in 1906, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that comes in. And so every once in a while somebody shows up because there's a website, Boat Nerds, that tells you, <laughs> oh, that nice. boatnerds.net or com okay. or whatever, that tells cool. the schedules and the history of all these ore carriers. Yeah. So people, like they do on the trains, you know, they got yeah. people that drive around taking pictures of the, of the old train locomotives and stuff like that. They want a complete collection of locomotives <laughs> with the names of, you know, sure. like the Chicago Short Line or the whatever. You can follow them all the way up to Minnesota, the ore. They do the same thing with the uh, ore carriers and yeah. the ships and stuff. So, yeah, and, and this little thing on the Bruce Brothers, if you get a half a dozen of those type of things on your website mm -hmm. and start 
people talking about it on, on social media, mm -hmm. you're going to have people show. I mean, we've seen people show up driving cars that are made just like the Blues Brothers car, <laughs> you know. Come and, on. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and on YouTube, yeah. there's um, um, a lot of YouTubes where people uh, go around and film all the major scenes, uh, what they look like now. So they run, you know, 20 seconds of, of the movie, and then they run 20 seconds of, you know, you know so they got these little 10 minute YouTubes that, that's, you know, then and now type of thing. So there's, there's a lot of, it, you know, this country's crazy with people who have a niche, and they'll <laughs> drive a thousand miles to, <laughs> to see something. So we got to utilize that in the history and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, just responsibly. So I, I would think uh, access to the river uh, when, the, um, when the new 41 opened up, um, it gave access to the north uh, um, slip mm -hmm. out there at South Works. And, you know, like two weekends ago, there was like a hundred fishermen <laughs> there, yeah. so it, it, it uh, you know it takes a step by step. So each one of these, like that little tour and other stuff, get and getting it on the web so people can just link to it easily is, I think, helps a lot. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Michael Bowes, who uh, covers the Wolf Lake area mostly, uh, invited Durs Anderson from Open Lands to do a presentation at Kemme College. Uh, and there's Anderson was talking about um, things like kayaking and canoeing, which would probably mostly be uh, along uh, the Lake Michigan shore. But do you see any future in, in regard to that on the Kelly Met? Um, it's in sections. I, I think all, 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 all that is. I mean, uh, Wolf Lake has a lot of what the, the new exciting sport is. Uh, it, is kite surfing. Kite. You know, they got the wind surfing, but now they got kite surfing. Uh, I I didn't believe I went there five years ago when we were the, when the wind was blowing about 35 with puffs to 40 uh, to take a picture of uh, the uh, petroleum coke flying, and um, I went by and there was about five guys. They were going 40 miles an hour. Uh, kite surfing and having great great fun uh, in it. Um, you know there is a problem downtown uh, with the kayakers um, because of the uh, number of recreational boats and you know that they have the actual people own boats driving through you know 40 foot power boats or so. There is a company electric boat company that rents like a dozen little electric boats where people watch like a three minute video and then they hand a bow over to them, but these are little boats. They got the, the kayaks and, um, and it, it's, it's dangerous at, at some point. Well here, it could be more dangerous because these, some of these vessels have so much horsepower on their, coming off their propellers and their bow and stern thrusters. If, if you happen to be in the, you know, alongside them, even if you're 40 feet away, when they need to turn on their thruster to make the turn, you're, you're going to be <laughs> in, in trouble. And having people know where they would have to position themselves on a, on a bend in the river and whatever. So there are sections that, that you would have to be a very experienced, you know, been doing it for 10 years and really understand to have a kayak. But there's other sections that would be certainly available, you mm -hmm. know. And and, and of interest, so and that that the, the the recreational use is it got to be controlled. I mean, I thought of of you know the one way to start is I should actually purchase a small vessel that would be Coast Guard uh, uh, inspected that could do river trips just just you know once or twice a week. I mean, not like every three hours like these these guys downtown are coining money. People are lined up, 200 at a time, 34 bucks each, to go out for an hour. <laughs> you know, and uh, those. Okay, Grant. When can you start this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a fortune. Well, no. 
I, I, we're not in the same architectural tour. Thirty, you know, we're at, we're probably at the fourteen dollar. <laughs> oh, there's uh, a lot to celebrate along, along the Calumet. Yeah, a lot to is, celebrate, yeah. which we yeah. don't do. We don't yeah. celebrate it. Yeah. But yeah. that would be a great. I can't say vehicle. I have to say vessel. vessel. For it, right? <laughs> yeah. But that's a but great idea. The controllable access point is they actually have a. Uh, you need a, a uh, what they call a certificate of inspection that the Coast Guard grade sheets vessel, depending on its stability and size and whatever, the number of passengers for hire, and that the boat has all the right safety equipment and stuff. And then you need a, a, a Coast Guard licensed captain and mm -hmm. stuff. So it does get a little bit expensive on the boat and the operators and stuff like that. But uh, it, it makes sense to get more access to the river. <coughs> Thank you. Back to Thank the you. kayaking question, I just wanted to mention that the Calumet Waterway Stewards is just one of um, a handful of really active groups that are bringing people out on mm -hmm. kayaks and canoes, right, Tom, also, yeah. um, on the Little Cal and the Calumet River. And they love Kickapoo Woods. There's a new boat put in there. Um, so they're just one example. I think it's run by Michael Taylor of, of folks that are just regularly getting out and really enjoying the waterways now. So. And, and hopefully more to come. June second will be our uh, fourth or fifth annual yes. cleanup on the Little Cal River, and anybody, uh, amateurs or anybody, can come out. There'll be kayaks and canoes out there. If you don't mind uh, going out and doing a little, rolling up your sleeves a little bit, you can come out on the river. There, we'll have an abundance of uh, where precisely, Tom. Uh, they're going to put in, I think they're putting in at Kickapoo Woods, which okay. is in Riverdale, not too far from here. And then it uh, follows the little cal around to uh, Blue Island at Phase Point. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's an interesting place, and, and I guarantee you, once you get out there on the water, you will forget that you're anywhere near the city of Chicago. You're, you're out there in the wilderness, and, and it's just utterly beautiful, the bird life and the aquatic life. and. Um, Occasionally you might see a deer or something out there. We've been known to do that. It's really cool. A, a, a good you. example of uh, what needs to be done is Urban Kayaks, which is, the I think, the largest of the three kayak renters in the show, has a video, a safety video, on their website. But also if you went there, to, you would sit down <laughs> in a little theater they have and watch it for six minutes. But go to Urban Kayaks and, and look at their video it's specifically talking about, <clears throat> you know, how to stay alive on the main branch of the river, uh, but it, 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 it needs to be, uh, the local knowledge needs to be given to kayakers wherever they go, you know, so you have to do one specifically where to go, where to stay, what to watch out for mm -hmm. here, and, and they, they did an excellent job because they did a lot of, um, of uh, comedy or funny stuff so so you, you keep somebody's attention for six minutes of safety <coughs> takes a little bit of, of uh, a, a well done well produced uh, thing it's worth uh, it's one of the better ones that gets the message across the safety message but then a friend mark Mark Carroll, who's been working closely with us on some of these he's with the Chicago rowing group and yeah um, he attends, uh, just the other day we met downtown last week, uh, but he was just coming back from a safety committee Chicago meeting. Harbor Safety Committee, yeah. That's one, mm -hmm. up at Navy Pier. Yeah. So uh, these things are going on, and, and that would be advisable for anybody who wants to get out there on kayaks. And, and probably we would, if that ever came to be out here, there would probably be lessons on doing it, maybe at your facility, who knows. All right. Um, thank you, Tom. Thank you, Grant. Uh, I'd like to call Sarah up now to talk a little bit about the um, Great Rivers Plan, where where it's going, where it's been, and uh, specifically the site we're looking at today. Yeah. Thanks, Jack. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. And good to see some very familiar faces and a couple of new folks. I don't know if we've met. I'm Sarah Cardona. Angela Harlock with Creation Associates. Oh, great. Angela, mm -hmm. hi. Hi. Uh, so yeah, Sarah Cardona with the Metropolitan Planning Council, and I have a colleague here with me as well, Chloe Karen Sands. And uh, we've been working for the last 18 months on Great Rivers Chicago, which I think for hopefully most of you is not a new 
initiative that you heard of, but it's um, in partnership with the City of Chicago Mayor's Office, uh, the Metropolitan Planning Council, Friends of the Chicago River, and a slew of other partners, CMAP, our local um, regional a uh, planning agency, and many other partners including Dan, Grant, um, GCI. We've all been working on what really is the future of Chicago's three rivers, and uh, where's Tom? The history is very helpful to hear, Tom, that we have to be reminded that we have three rivers that run here throughout our city limits. So it is the Calumet River, the Chicago River, and a stretch of the Des Plaines River that runs throughout the city limits. So this effort has been looking at all three of those as a system over 150 miles of riverfront. And through a robust community engagement process, we heard from over 6,000 community residents as to what they would like to see for the future of our rivers. And we were very happy that in this August, we put that all down on paper and in agreement together with all of those partners for our great rivers. This is the vision for inviting, productive, and living rivers.